Hey, welcome back. You're watching Impossible Color. And today's episode is a Save My Photo. NYR999 submitted this awesome photo of a beach scene in California. I'll send a little link to this person's Flickr in the description down below. So overall, this image is really cool. We've got a lot of motion with these waves coming in on an angle. Lots of layers here. We've got a couple of foregrounds, lots of mid-ground overlapping and trailing right back to the horizon. But uh, we've got some chromatic aberration issues along the water. I think we can deal with this overexposed area and just bring a lot of color and detail all back into the image. So this is the camera raw that I'm working with. So to be fair, it hasn't been processed yet. But uh, by the time we're done, we're probably going to end up with something like this. I, I did a run through uh, earlier. And, uh, but don't worry, I'm going to go through each uh, step by step. And then we'll take it into Photoshop and do some fine polish. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is uh, get this white balance sorted out. So I'm just going to try the auto. See where that brings us. Maybe we'll try cloudy. That gets us pretty close, but I'm going to tweak this just a little bit, make it slightly cooler. Let's go about 6,200 on this one. And a little bit more purple in there. And the next thing we'll do is start to work on the exposure settings. Now I'm going to increase the contrast a bit. Let's go up to 20 there. You can see a, a little bit more depth coming through now. If we bring down the highlights, we're going to help deal with some of this overexposed area in the sky. And we're also going to give a little bit more to the foam that is being overexposed. And then I'll bring up the shadows. We'll get a lot more detail in the cliffs there. Let's go to about 50 for that one. And the whites we're going to brighten the whole image up quite a bit here too now we kind of have a little bit of a compromise happening here where we did lose a bit of detail that we gained when we brought the highlights down but don't worry about that we'll be doing some other tricks later to deal with that now i'm going to bring down the blacks Whenever you bring up your shadows, it's a good idea to counter by bringing down your blacks so you don't lose your tonal range. So I'm actually going to go down the same amount that I brought the shadows up. So already we're seeing a lot more tone. Bring the clarity up. Get some more detail in there as well. Now, when I'm doing portraits, I don't normally put the clarity this high, but for landscapes, I really love seeing all that texture. Okay, now the next thing I'll be looking at, we'll go to the hue saturation luminance uh, section, and we'll look at the hue in the first tab. So I'm going to take my oranges and just bring it a little bit closer to the red side. Let's go minus 15. And same thing with the yellows. Bring those to the warmer side, away from the greens. Not a lot of greens in the image, so I'll skip that one. And for the aqua, I'm going to bring that down. You can see the aqua making its way through these uh, waves down here, a little bit trailing up through here. Bring the blue up and also the purple up a little bit. Move those towards, uh, so the blue more to the purple side and the purple a little bit more to the red side. And there isn't a lot of magenta in the scene, so I'm going to skip that. Now for the saturation. Not a lot I'm going to do here. It's already getting pretty saturated with a lot of other changes, but I am going to bring out the water a little bit. Let's just bring those up to... 10 on both the aqua and the blues. And now for the luminance. These are the tonal values of the image per color channel. So for the reds, I think they look fine. Now for the oranges, 
I'm going to crank that up quite a bit. So you can see a lot of these oranges and the cliffs that are creating a much more depth because you can see the separation between the shadows of the cliffs and the brighter areas. So that's the yellows and the oranges along here. Give that look. Greens and aquas look fine. I'm going to bring down the blues a little bit. So you see when I do that, we get a lot more detail coming through in the foam and, and also other areas of the water that take on some different colors. So let's go yeah, about minus 25. And likewise for the purples, when I bring that down, you get some contrast in the water and we start to see a little bit more happening in this area in the sky. I'm actually going to take that way down to minus 60. Okay, so now you can see the chromatic aberration along this foam is becoming more pronounced. You can also see it on the edge of here. So I'm going to go to remove chromatic aberration and boom, so easy. You just see it completely disappear from there. It's always a good idea to check your uh, your lens corrections at some point in your image. So if I turn that off and you look at this line along the cliff, it just looks pretty bad, but again, so easy to remove. So the last thing that I want to do is actually uh, just check my lens profile corrections. It does bring out another issue that my horizon here is looking a little bit tilted. So. I'm going to try to crop that in with a bit of a slant there. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is save a snapshot of that. Anything that I'm doing in here in uh, Adobe Camera Raw, you can do the exact same functions in Lightroom. It may look a little different. Your menu is going to have things in different areas. You're going to have images down on the bottom. Instead of snapshot, there may be kind of a visual representation of it, but really it's all the same thing. So if you do know Lightroom's functions, uh, you should be able to follow along, no problem. So I'm going to call this after. So we'll look at the camera raw before and the after. Do that one more time. Big changes, but we're not done yet. So I'm going to open that image up in Photoshop. I'm actually going to go right back uh, into Camera Raw after I save this. So back in Camera Raw, I'm going to go back to the HSL tab, and I'm going to convert the image to grayscale. And now I'm going to go through each of these individual colors and I'm going to adjust the tones. And I'm just going to ignore the colors entirely and just try to get a really nice looking image as though it was a black and white image. So I can see when I bring the blues and purples down, I'm just getting a lot more depth the sky is getting darker, more interesting. The water is taking on some more life. And even bringing down the magentas that we couldn't see before are making a difference along here and in the sky. So I'm going to run with that and we'll just save that version as BW for black and white and open that up in Adobe Photoshop. Control A to select it all and Control X. We'll cut that out of there. I'm going to paste it on a layer on top. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the blending mode to luminosity. And what that does is it basically says, take the tonal information of the layer above and apply it to everything below.
So you can see it adds a lot more interest to the image. It preserves all the colors that are there, but just gives it some more tonal depth. Now this is a, a really cool trick that you can do and it kind of helps you see color and tone separately so that you can master both of them. So the final thing that uh, I want to do in Camera Raw is I want to get a little bit more detail in the sky here. So we'll jump right back in and I'll go to the after that we had. And I'm going to bring down the whites in the sky so I can see this extra band that's happening here. It just gives a bit more detail. That looks better for the sky, so I'll open that up. And we'll paste that on a layer on top. And whenever you paste something like that, make sure you go paste special, paste in place, or control, or shift control V. And then it will go exactly where you need it to go and you don't have to move it around. So I see that I'm getting a lot more tonal information there, but clearly it doesn't match up. So what I'm gonna do is create a layer mask this little white box that happened over here. You want to click on that. And now I'm just going to grab a soft brush and I'm going to paint black to hide the areas that I don't want. So basically I'm just going to feather it off. Cause I don't want to darken these cliffs up. I just wanted to deal with the sky. Now I'll turn that on and off. So I don't want to change this part of the cliff. So I'm going to mask that part out. And that looks good. So overall, I like the look of the image, but there's a few two final steps I'd like to do in Photoshop. I'm going to select everything and just drag to new layer and that will duplicate them all together. Then I'm going to click control E and that will merge them into one layer. And now on that layer, I'm going to do a little bit of noise reduction. It's not a lot of noise in this image, but we will be sharpening the image. So I want to uh, make sure that gets sorted out beforehand. So I'll go to filter, Nick collection, and we're going to use the free uh, noise reduction tool called Define2. So we got a nice side-by-side -side tool that we can work with. And we have a slider for the amount of noise in uh, contrast and also in color. Again, not a dramatic change because it, I think the, uh, the ISO must have been something pretty decent for this image. But we'll just crank it up a little bit more and okay that. Really just prepping for our sharpen. Now we'll go right back into the Nick collection and this time we'll go to Output Sharpener. I'm going to pick a spot that has a little bit of sky, a little bit of rock and water. Just to kind of see that relationship that's happening here. It's definitely adding a lot more by cranking that up. Let's try adding some more strength. Keep that structure down. That makes it look too uh, metallic when that goes up too high. Let's try the local contrast. And the focus. Let's run our before and after here. A 
Now I think I'm going to bring that focus back down to zero because we're looking just a little bit too sharp in this area. It's looking almost metallic. All right, so I'm going to run that one. And now we'll do a before and after of the sharpen. It may be hard to see on the uh, YouTube video, but it's looking a lot more crisp on my end. So that's the final step. Just to show a big before and after, I'm going to go back into Camera Raw, grab the original, Camera Raw, paste it in on the top. Here is the before, here's the after. Before and after. Well, I hope you like the changes, NYR999. Thanks to everyone for watching Impossible Color. If you want to submit your own image to Impossible Color, just send me a link in the comment section below, or you can go on my Reddit, my Facebook, my Twitter, any social media, and submit your link there. You can send it to me at Google Drive or whatever, Dropbox or whatever's convenient for you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the button below if you want to get updates every time I make a new video. And we'll see you next week.